What's going on, everybody? Behind the Scoop here. Here we are, about a month later, with the Echo Loop. Um, before I kind of talked about some of the great things in the ecosystem that I enjoy using the Echo Loop with, but today we're going to cover a few things that have kind of bothered me in my one month with this device. Uh, number one, first and foremost, is connectivity. It's a little spotty. I thought it was maybe an Android thing or maybe an iOS thing, but I think it's a Bluetooth radio with something this small. Uh, it can't be too powerful. So uh, I've got a couple different devices. I tried it with my V60 and with my Pixel 4a. And on both devices, I had two weird different connectivity problems. With the V60, I would drop connection, but I could do all the functions, use it as a uh, Bluetooth headset for phone calls and everything. On the Pixel 4a, I didn't lose connection, but I could never really truly use it as a Bluetooth headset. I'd go to answer the phone with the ring, and it would default back to the actual phone earpiece itself. So it's been kind of a weird double-edged sword depending on which platform I use it on. Uh, I know some with iOS, it's, uh, they have issues with overall connectivity. It would drop connection, reconnect, drop connect. You'd have to power cycle the ring itself to get back on. But uh, that's one of the problems. The other problem I had is the most glaring issue is, man, this thing is finicky. It's really, really finicky. I mean, to be perfectly honest, charging something shouldn't be this hard. It takes multiple attempts to try to get the the three pins on the inside lined up with the three pins on the charging puck itself. Now, they're smart enough to put magnets in there to keep it in place, but it's a lot of little twist to turn, twist, turn, twist, turn to get it lined up to get to charge. I can't tell you how many times I tried to charge this thing, and I thought I put it in the charger overnight, and you wake up the next morning, and it's at zero. It's dead. Nothing you can do about it. Is gone, no power. So it's kind of finicky. But with that being said, all in all, it's a phenomenal experience if you're in the Amazon ecosystem. And I, and I stress that. If you are in the Amazon ecosystem, this device is pretty dang neat. But if you're not, it's really not for you. I don't recommend spending money on it. Even if you want to start the ecosystem, build your, build your Echo Dots or whatever Echo device you want to use, get that set up, get that functional go from there uh this is still in the early stages so you can't buy it outright what you do is you get the you sign up for the invite they send you the invite you get your sizing kit pick your size and then they send you the size you've picked um i will leave a link to the sign up in the description for this video but otherwise uh it's a cool cool device that has some limitations with technology and size um, battery life is gets me through a day, um, but it's still got some limitations. And again, it's a Gen 1 product. Uh, for it to be this advanced and this functional for a Gen 1 product, especially from Amazon, because we all know the Fire Phone went so well. <laughs> it's pretty good. So that's all I got. You guys take care. Buy on a scoop out. Take care of yourselves. It's a little crazy out there. But just, just, just be a good human. It's not hard. It's free. Anybody can do it. Take care.